Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, books is important to talk about why reading scripts and books is important when you want to become a short filmmaker. So to start off this video, I'm going to bring your attention to this website, Studio Binder. Now I've talked about Studio Binder a lot in the past and I didn't realize this website had this feature until I searched it for this video. So if you go onto Studio Binder and you search in free movie scripts, then a page with hundreds of movie scripts comes up and you can simply view the PDF by clicking on which film script you'd like to read. Now for this example, I've brought up the script for The Adventures of Tintin because I really like this animated film and I think the script would be kind of interesting to look at to see how much room they leave for the animators when creating the film. So let's just give a quick read of the opening scene of Tintin. Now here we can see that it's an exterior shot in a street market during the day. The swirling colours of an artist's palette. A street artist bearing an uncanny resemblance to Herge is sketching a young man with his back to the camera. They are in the middle of a busy street market. The street artist says, very nearly there sir. I have to say, your face is familiar. Have I drawn you before? Then Tintin off camera says, occasionally. The street artist then says, of course, I've seen you in the newspaper. You're a reporter. Then there's an angle on the white dog sitting down looking a little bored at the subject's feet. The dog whimpers. Then Tintin says, I'm a journalist. Be patient, Snowy, not much longer. Then two patent leather shoes enter the frame, distracting Snowy. Snowy leaves to follow the man who deftly picks the pockets of market patrons as he goes. Angle on Snowy as he trots through the crowd, keeping his eyes on the pickpocket. The pickpocket bumps into another market patron and snatches their wallet. I do beg your pardon, he says. Angle on Snowy who follows the pickpocket as a hand continues to snatch wallets and handbags from their unsuspecting owners. The street artist then says, there, I believe I've captured something of your likeness. The street artist hands Tintin the picture, showing the cartoon Tintin. Our fully dimensional Tintin admires it. Not bad, what do you think Snowy? Tintin looks around, Snowy isn't there. Snowy? Tintin hands money to the artist and leaves in search of Snowy. There you are sir, now where's he run off to? As Tintin strolls through the market he passes two pairs of eyes, the Thompsons peering through holes in a cut newspaper. Anything? Nothing. Tintin crosses behind them. Snowy? Tintin has paused by a stall selling mirrors, which reflect multiple images of his famous quaff. A dog barks, Snowy runs over. Where have you been, hey? Chasing cats again? Angle on Tintin as something catches his eye in the reflection of a stall selling cheap antiques. Snowy, look at this. Close on, a magnificent model sailing ship in a glass case. Tintin and Snowy walk towards it and bend down to take a closer look. Tintin leans in closer. Intricate detail fills the frame as if the boat were real. We can almost hear the sea, the shouts of sailors, the cry of gulls. Now we'll stop there for now because I'm not going to read the whole script for you guys. But as you can see, the way that they've written this script, you can sort of get an idea of the pacing of the scene and you can tell how quickly it will cut between maybe Snowy chasing this pickpocket and then back to Tintin handing over this money. Now it's interesting to read scripts in this way because you can see how everything's laid out with the sort of location, then the description and the action, followed by the dialogue which seems perfectly natural and is something that you might want to achieve in your own short film. I think what's interesting and something that I've just learned is the ability to say angle on as well as close in on a character because that then sort of implies the shot that the writer would like for this section of the film. Now here's also a great example of where the writer can influence the final film. By saying that we can almost hear the sea, the shouts of sailors and the cry of gulls, it sort of implies that when they're sort of sound mixing this film, they might use this as inspiration for the mix of sound and is one way that the writer can influence the other areas of production. Now moving on to the next part of this video, we're going to take a quick look at this book called The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. And I want to show you how important it is to continue to read as a filmmaker in order to understand how characters have been sort of created in history and how you can probably use similar archetypes for your own films. Now, if anyone hasn't read this book yet, I do recommend it because there's so many different characters that all interlink 
and I think it's something important to consider when creating a short film because you might want to have loads of different characters whose lives all interject. And now by reading books you can see how a writer gives you the backstory. Now you wouldn't necessarily write all of this in a script, however as a director or an actor it's important to consider backstory when acting or directing. Now I'm just going to read one line from this book that I found really impactful and it comes quite early on so this isn't a massive spoiler for the plot of the film but I think it's it's a line that needs to be considered. I thought too, said Zaya, that his head was an odd shape. Massive, said her father. A trifle massive, but then that effect is always created by a wig. They both looked at each other and smiled. Now, since this is a murder mystery book and every detail is something that the reader needs to consider, by ending a chapter on this line, it creates sort of tension and those are the moments that you want to aim to create in your own short films when a scene changes. You always want to give the audience a bit of information at the end of the scene that can either explain what they've just seen or is important for what they're going to see in the future. Finally, we're going to end this video by looking at An Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley. Now, this is simply just a play and it differs from a film script because you don't really get as much action or location lines um, that is all sort of considered by the, the crew that put on the production at a theatre. Um, so I'm just going to find a quick section of dialogue that I think is really interesting. And this dialogue can sort of show you how characters interact with each other. And I think the more plays that you read, the more used to it you'll become. And then it will be slightly easier to write your own scripts in the future. So the inspector says, I don't play golf. Burling says, I didn't suppose you did. Eric, bursting out. Well, I think it's a damn shame. Inspector, no, I've never wanted to play. Eric says, no, I mean about this girl, Eva Smith. Why shouldn't they try for higher higher wages? We try for the highest possible prices, and I don't see why she should have been sacked just because she'd a bit more spirit than the others. You said yourself she was a good worker. I'd have let her stay. Burling, rather angrily, unless you brighten your ideas, you'll never be in a position to let anybody stay or tell anybody to go. It's about time you learnt to face a few responsibilities. That's something this public school and varsity life you've had doesn't seem to teach you. Eric sulkily, well, we don't need to tell the inspector all about that, do we? So here you can see that in a play, you get the sort of parentheses of how to say the line. Now, this is a way that the writer can sort of lay out how each character is feeling in the script, um, which can influence the final play. So there we go, that's the end of the video and thanks for sticking around to look at those three examples of why it's important to read scripts as well as books and plays. I think what's most important to take from this is by reading film scripts you get used to the layout and how to actually set out a script for the screen. By reading books it's really useful to learn about how a character is sort of a whole, they have a backstory, they have a life, they have a past, present and future and this is something you, could, you should consider before writing your film script. Then finally, just by reading plays, you can sort of learn how characters converse, and that will definitely help when writing dialogue for your scripts once you know the layout. Now I hope you've learned a little bit about how to write your own film scripts in this video, and let me know down in the comments some of your favorite books or plays that you've read in the past, as I'd love to give them a go.